Sure. Okay. So uh, thanks everyone for joining today's session. So I'm Nadia from Chanat Mission. So I'll begin today's session. And it's been uh, nice that a lot of you are joining today's session and we are looking forward for more of you to join today's session. Sorry for a little bit of delay for about like two minutes. So I hope the whole session today can give you some insights about what it is like to study in China. And also if you have any questions, uh, feel free to just write it down on the Q&A session, uh, Q&A part of the Soho, sorry, uh, of the Zoom. So you can just type, type it there. I can try to answer it live later at the end of the video. And also my colleague can also uh, help to answer the questions uh, from the Q&A bar there. Okay, without further ado, I will introduce myself again. So my name is Nadia. I'm an advisor at China Missions. So I'm based in Beijing, China because our China Admissions office is based in Beijing, China, but I'm originally from Indonesia. So if you don't know where Indonesia is, I bet you guys know where Bali is. So that's where I live. No, I'm not in Bali, but yeah, close to Bali. Anyway, so I studied at University of International Business and Economics in Beijing uh, in 2017. To 2019, uh, Master of World Economics is my program. So I joined there about three years ago in September where I get lots of new insights and also new information about, yeah, definitely world economics. But not only that, I get a whole new experience because I met lots of people coming from different parts of the world. Like uh, lots of my friends are coming from Thailand and then I got friends from Mongolia, from Bangladesh and from other countries like Russia and Tajikistan and others. So it really give me like an in-depth experience and also some cultural experience as well, knowing people coming from different background. And also what I really like about it is that it gives me like a whole new uh, horizon, also a whole new connection. Because uh, next time I go to Thailand or I go to Laos or Mongolia, I got lots of friends to contact with. I can do business with them. I can so basically do so many things connected with people from around the world. So. Studying in China, in my opinion, has given me like lots of uh, different opportunities and also different experience, like something that I have never experienced before if I studied in Indonesia, because I studied my bachelor in Indonesia, but I feel like the experiences of me studying in Indonesia compared to when I study in China is totally different. And I never regret my decision to come and study in China. So I believe this will be very beneficial for you, all of you as well to uh, come and study in China because trust me, it will definitely give you like the best experience in your life. You will never ever regret coming to China. So next up is the about my company, about China Missions that I represent today. So China Missions is an award-winning platform for international students to apply to Chinese universities. So basically we partner with over a hundred top Chinese universities and we have over uh, 100,000 registered students on our platform. So uh, our companies have won several awards. For example, in the recent years, uh, my supervisor, like my boss, has got the Foreign Entrepreneurs 30 Award in China by the World Innovators Meet 2019. And also our company has uh, awarded the Holland IQ China at Tech 100 in the early 2020, and also got the Chaoyang Phoenix Grant as, uh, from Chaoyang government in Beijing uh, last year and also this year. So moreover, uh, the team at China Missions is a multicultural team from various backgrounds and also countries. So our team members were mostly former Chinese students, uh, former students at Chinese University. So I got colleagues from all over the world. So I'm from Indonesia. I'm the only one Indone I'm the only Indonesian around. And then my colleagues are from China. I got colleagues from Africa, uh, and then I got colleagues from Mongolia as well as the Europe, UK, for example. So yeah, uh, these are some of our partner universities. So we've partnered with uh, over 100 of top Chinese universities in China. For example, as we can see here, uh, Tongji University, Beijing, Univers uh, Beijing Institute of Technology, East China Normal University, Beijing Foreign Studies University, SBC, Sino British College, and then got UIBE, Zhejiang University of Science and Technology, Wuhan University, and many others. So here are the agenda of today's uh, info session. So first one is the admission update for the September 2020 intake. And then the second one is the application process. And then the third one is the scholarship. And then the fourth one is the tips and trick and like how to, how to apply to China and stuff like that. And then the fifth one is the FAQ. 
And after the whole presentation is done, then it's time for me to answer your questions live. But yeah, I will remind you again that some questions will be uh, will be covered in the Q&A bar. So first of all is why study in China? So the first reason is would be to learn Chinese language. So Chinese language is the most spoken language in the world. So for me, it is okay that you don't know Chinese at all the first time you come to China. That was my experience. I basically don't really speak Chinese. Well, I did study Chinese for a while, but then uh, arriving in Beijing, I know that I noticed that I forget everything. I cannot even say a word to anyone. So definitely, um, it's going to be a huge experience for you and also a huge opportunity for you. Even though you study the English taught program in China, you can still uh, study Chinese language on your free time. So you can, you know, like you can do two things at the same time. And then the second one is because China is the popular destination for international students. Right now, there are about 500,000 international students who are studying in China and it's getting more and more popular in terms of education destination. And the third one, Chinese universities have high reputation. So uh, Chinese universities are increasingly well respected. And then so many uh, universities have like a good global rank. For example, we can see on the image there like Peking University and then Zhejiang University, Tsinghua University, uh, Fudan University. Those are all respected universities in China and they are also respected globally. The fourth reason why you should be studying in China because studying in China is actually relatively affordable compared to if you study in European countries or the US or Australia or even Singapore. So yeah, uh, the tuition fee at Chinese, at Chinese universities, if you want to study for non-degree program, meaning like, like a one semester Chinese language program where you learn Chinese language, it starts from 6,500 per semester. And then for the degree programs like bachelor, master and PhD programs, uh, the tuition fee starts from 18,000 RMB per semester, oh sorry, per year, not per semester. And then uh, for the on-campus accommodation, it may be various, depends on the university and also depends on the room type that you get. But approximately it will cost you around 35 to like 100 uh, RMB per day per person. And then for the off-campus accommodation, uh, actually, international students are allowed to rent a place outside of campus. So if you don't want to live in a dorm, maybe you want to rent a studio or something, it's up to you. So the price would be from 2000 RMB per month. Uh, but if you study in like, let's say Beijing or Shanghai, which is obviously more expensive than this, then you would spend around like 3000 RMB per month for like a shared uh, a room with a shared bathroom and also shared kitchen. And if you choose to like have a studio for yourself, then it will cost you around like 5000 per month. And for the living expenses, I would say living in China is uh, relatively cheap in my opinion. So if you eat at the canteen, you can just spend like 10 to 15 RMB per meal. And then if you eat at the restaurant, it depends again, which restaurant you are going, of course, if you're going to like expensive, exclusive restaurants, it's gonna be uh, expensive. So it will cost you around 30 to 100 uh, RMB per meal. And then for public transportation, relatively cheap, one to two RMB per trip. For subway, it's also about three to six uh, RMB per trip. And these two are based in Beijing's price. So I guess if you study in a smaller cities, like uh, yes, cities smaller than Beijing, it should be cheaper than this. So the fifth reason is because China is a country with fast development. If you can see all the pictures here, these are all the images of Chinese cities. So like the first one is there is Beijing, there is Chengdu, there is Xiamen. So uh, China, uh, Chinese government has been investing a lot in developing their roads, railways, and also transportation system, and also building infrastructure in every of their cities. So the sixth why, uh, the sixth reason is about the technology advancement. So basically, if you live in China, uh, you can easily do everything with a single click from your smartphone. So from grocery shopping, if you want to rent a bike, if you want to book a taxi, if you want to pay for literally everything, you can just use it with a single click on your smartphone. So it's going to be a very convenient life for you in China with the help of the advance of the technology. So in conclusion, why studying in China? Because studying in China is an adventure of a lifetime. So there are endless travel opportunities across China. You get to travel to different parts of China and then different uh, 
tourism places, and then you get to discover delicious Chinese cuisine, and you can meet friends from all over the world, just like what I experienced when I studied in China. And last but not least, it will definitely helpful for you to develop a global mindset in the future. So yeah, admission is now open for September 2020 intake. Uh, for the deadline, so for the application deadline for the CSC scholarship, a lot of you have been asking me this on WhatsApp, on email, everywhere. So for CSC scholarship, actually the deadline has passed. It was on March. So it depends on uh, which method you use to apply, but yeah, technically it ended in March. And then right now, Chinese University is only accepting applications for students who are willing to self-finance their study in China. So if, you, uh, if for the other universities, the application deadline would be from May around July, from May to July. However, majority of them will put the deadline at the end of June. And then uh, for the A-list universities, which means like uh, Tsinghua University, Peking University, Fudan University. So their deadline have mostly have passed already aside from their Chinese language program because these top universities, they opened the application period early and they ended it early as well. So there are different types of uh, programs available in China, like non-degree Chinese language program and then degree program like bachelor, master and PhD. And then uh, I would like to highlight why you should be applying now instead of like waiting until July. I think it's the best time for you to apply now because if you apply as soon as possible, then you will also get the decision and also get all the information, all the updates from the university early as, as early as possible as well. So you don't need to prolong your application and wait until the end because it will just make you how do I say like uh, more troublesome later. You know, like when you are when you have to. Uh, get all the, the documents on time and everything so it's best for you to apply as early as possible because then you will also give yourself time to prepare everything for all your departure to China. So what is the application process and how to complete the application? So basically you can just uh, go to China Admissions platform. I'll give you the link later. So first of all you have to choose the program that you want to apply for because Chinese University offers so many uh, English taught programs in China and then you have to apply online, then complete the online application, upload the documents, and last but not least is to pay the application fee and then you are ready to go. You can submit your application and it's considered completed. So uh, what to do after you uh, submitted your application to China Admission? So basically what we do is that we will review your applications first. So we'll review whether or not you get all the required documents by the university. And, so, uh, and once you got the required documents, you would submit your application to the university. Sometimes you may be confused, right? For example, uh, if your grades are like, let's say 70%, can I get admissions to here and there? You can simply send us your transcript and we can also help to review your documents before you finalize your application. So anyway, uh, after you submitted your application, we will submit it, we will review it and then submit it to the university. And then you can wait for the university's decision, which means they will inform you whether or not you get accepted or rejected. They will inform you both, uh, both ways. If you're accepted, they let you know. If you're rejected, they let you know as well. So if you're accepted, then uh, you must pay the deposit fee to the university. Like majority of Chinese universities are, are requiring this step. So what is deposit fee? Deposit fee is basically like a fee to secure your seat in China. It just says that you confirm, you confirm your seat or like uh, you confirm that you will come and study there, something like that. And the amount of the deposit fee is various as well. Sometimes they ask for like 500 RMB. Sometimes they ask for the full tuition fee amount. So it depends because different universities have different regulation on this. And then uh, before, so if you are rejected, what to do? What to do is to apply again. That's why in my opinion, it's better to apply to multiple universities uh, so that you can, you know, like you can get higher chance of acceptance at this university. So next up, after you pay the deposit fee, uh, the university will send you visa form or what's called the JW202 form and also the admission notice to your home country. So then you can use these two uh, documents and then apply for visa at the Chinese embassy. And last but not least, Welcome to China, fly it to China, book your ticket, pack your bag and fly to China. We'll see each other in China. So 
did you know that there are actually over 2,000 programs in China and English? So Chinese universities, as I mentioned before, have lots of different programs. Nowadays, they do have like semester long Chinese language program, bachelor, master and PhD, both in Chinese and also in English. So these are the popular and also the recommended programs in China that I can uh, like introduce to you. So for MBBS, I know that MBBS is actually a very competitive program. And this is like a favorite programs as well. Like a lot of you wants to want to become a doctor and also study in China. So these three are the top universities, uh, Shanto University Medical College. The deadline is actually in May 2020. And then for Xiamen University, unfortunately, the deadline has passed. But I can also refer you to another uh, university that you can apply for. For example, Shandong University is also a good one. And then uh, MBBS at Jiangsu University deadline is at the end of July. Uh, and then moreover, like just a quick reminder, we will be having an MBBS info session this Friday at the same time. And then uh, for business program, if you're looking for studying business, I would say BFSU. They have this amazing uh, international business school there. I visited it before and it was awesome. So they have this bachelor in international program, but uh, bachelor in international business program, but actually they do have other types of business program as well. For example, bachelor in e-commerce and then bachelor in marketing. So if you want to get to know more about any of this program, I suggest you to uh, go to this link later, apply.china-admissions.com slash search. So you get to see it, all the listed available programs in China. And then if you are worried that you might be losing this link, uh, you can just simply screenshot this page. So you, you will not lose the information. And then for the MBA program, I would recommend you if you're looking for a top MBA programs, then uh, the first one is gonna be SIPS, China Europe International Business School. This is basically like the best MBA program in Asia. And, but the application deadline is today. So if you are willing to apply for this university, you have to complete your application now, don't worry. I will assist you so you can contact me at the end of the session. And then the next one is the Chengkong Graduate School of Business or CKGSP MBA program. It's located in Beijing. Application deadline is at the end of June. And then last but not least is ZIPS, uh, Chichang University International Business School. Uh, this is a part of the Chichang University, the A-list university in China. And then the application deadline is in May. So if you're looking for a dual degree opportunities, I would recommend you these three universities. The first one is uh, Xi'an Chaotong Liverpool University. So basically they have lots of options for their bachelor, master, and also PhD program. And then uh, because they're a joint university with uh, Liverpool University, so after you finish your studies there, you will get to diplomas, one from Xi'an Chaotong Liverpool University and another one from Liverpool University. And then the second one is the Asia Europe Business School or AEBS. So for AEBS, they only offer business programs as written on their name. And then uh, they offer dual degree programs. So you get to spend two years in Shanghai and also another two years in French. So you get uh, two different diplomas as well, one from AEBS, another one from Emilion Business School in French. And then the third one is UNNC, University of Nottingham, Ningpo, China. So basically this is a branch of the University of Nottingham, which also have different, uh, which also have another look, other locations in the UK and another one in Malaysia. So if you're looking for uh, computer science programs, these two are definitely my top recommendations that you can still apply now. First one is BIT in Beijing, Beijing Institute of Technology. So for BIT, their campus is actually located in the IT hub of Beijing. So I guess it's going to be like the right place for you to study computer science because you study computer in the heart of the you know like computer uh, in the heart of the id center in uh, in beijing and then another one is beihang university and then for chinese language program i would recommend blcc beijing uh, language and culture college simply because this university is specializes in teaching chinese language programs so they don't offer any other programs they only offer uh, Chinese language classes. And then again, if you wanted to know more, probably uh, you wanted to study chemical engineering and technology, or you wanted to study like mechanical engineering, which I didn't mention here. So you can just simply go to apply.china, uh, apply.china-admissions.com slash search to find out more about other programs that you're interested in. 
So next up, I will tell you how to apply because this is like the most important part. After you decide which program you want to apply for, then you have to start your application. So first of all, again, to find the program that you want to apply for. So there are about 2,538 programs available on our platform. Don't worry, don't get confused as well. There are filters on the left side of the page where you can like, uh, let's say choose if you want to study bachelor program and then or like if you want to study MBBS, if you have certain budget, if you love certain countries, so you can just basically filter it out so that you only get the relevant results. And then after, sorry, after that, if you choose the program already, you can, if you see the button there, the apply now button, you can just simply click the apply now button and then start your whole, your online application for that program. Next up is about uh, preparing your documents for the application. So these are the basic required documents for applications to Chinese universities. So first one is definitely passport. But a lot of you may not have passport right now, or maybe your passport have expired due to uh, the current situation. It's okay, you can just submit your expired passport for now, and then uh, I'm sure the university will allow you some time to finally get your new passport, because they would understand that everybody is uh, facing this situation right now. And then the second one is photograph, and then high school a certificate or your bachelor certificate if you're applying for master and master certificate if you're applying for PhD and also your transcript, your personal statement, uh, TOEFL or IELTS score for the English thought program and this is required if you are not from English speaking country or if your previous study wasn't taught in English. For example, I'm from Indonesia but let's say uh, I studied in international high school before so my whole uh, high school studies was completely taught in English, then if that's the case, you don't need to do TOEFL or IELTS. And then you need to also submit HSK certificate only if you are applying for Chinese taught programs. Otherwise, it's not required. And then uh, you need to complete bank statement or the guarantor later, uh, letter. So that's like the bank statement of your parents. So for example, your parents are study, uh, are the one who will fund your studies in China, then you need to get their bank statement over like the last three to six months. And then the balance there must be enough to cover your expenses uh, of studying in China for at least a year. And then two recommendation letters are required only for uh, students who are applying for master and PhD program and also research proposal it's required for students who are applying for PhD program because if you're applying for PhD program in China, normally they will ask you to contact the professor at the target Chinese universities to get their approval and then to get their uh, like acceptance to be your supervisor for your future PhD research. Next up, what is application fee? So basically application fee is required by Chinese universities in order to process your application to prepare and also to send the admission notice and visa form to your home address. And also please note that it is non-refundable at any case. So for example, you got rejected by the university, it is non-refundable. Or like, let's say we submitted your application to the university uh, completely successfully, but then you change your mind, don't wanna apply there anymore, it's non-refundable. So uh, any of the reason, this application fee is non-refundable. So how to pay the application fee? So basically, uh, we provide different payment methods to help you pay for the application fee so that every process can be easier for you. So you can pay with Visa, MasterCard, or PayPal, WeChat, or Alipay if you're in China, or if you prefer to use bank transfer, that's okay as well. And then here are the next topic, which is about scholarship. So I would discuss some about uh, some of the scholarship programs that we can help you apply for. So again, I want to remind you that CSE scholarship deadline have passed. It was at the end of uh, March. So we are now no longer able to help you apply for CSE. And I don't think you're able to apply for CSE at the moment because of the deadline has passed. So the first one is the uh, bachelor program scholarship at PLCC and Tianjin scholarship, uh, Tianjin University. So basically these are uh, like a one plus four program, which means that you get to spend one year in Beijing at BLCC to ch study Chinese language. 
until you reach HS, HSK level four, and then you will move to Tianjin for four years to study your bachelor program. So basically, Tianjin University offer multiple bachelor programs in Chinese, which is, as a part of the scholarship, you have to study your bachelor program in Chinese. So they have bachelor in engineering, business, computer, language, arts, and so on. So basically what covers is a free tuition fee when you are studying your bachelor, and then you get the monthly living subsidy at Tianjin University of uh, 1,400 RMB per month. So you have to pay all the expenses for the one year study at BLCC, but then you get all the free tuition fee and also a monthly living subsidy when you're studying in Tianjin for four years. And then the next one is the scholarship for master program. So I would like to introduce you to BFSU, Beijing Foreign Studies Universities, uh, for their master in international business program. It's located in Beijing. And then the duration of study is two years. So basically this scholarship cover free tuition fee. This is a part of the university scholarship or the scholarship provided by BFSU itself for excellent candidates. Uh, is the scholarship guaranteed? No, the answer is no, because every applications will be uh, reviewed and will be decided by the university officials and not us. So the next one again is ZAS, Zhichang University of Science and Technology located in Hangzhou. So basically uh, the scholarship covers, uh, our, the scholarship coverage is RMB 30,000 for the first year, uh, or it's called the Zhejiang Provinci uh, Provincial Government Scholarship. So it only covers for their master programs and they do have lots of choices for their master programs, but mostly is an engineering related major. So the duration of the study will be two years. So after you get the scholarship for the first year and then you can reapply for the scholarship for the second year. And then the next one is the master program scholarship at Jiangsu University, which is in Zhenjiang. Zhenjiang is in Jiangsu province. It's basically the same province as Shanghai and it's not really far away from Shanghai. So if you go by high speed train, I would say, I think it's about like one or like two hours at max from Shanghai to Zhenjiang. And then uh, they do have lots of uh, choices for their master program. So like master in business administration, master in uh, engineering, master in biology and foreign language and education and some others. So their scholarship coverage is 20,000 RMB per year, which is like a tuition fee discount for their master program. And then their normal uh, tuition fee will cost you around 22 to 25,000 RMB. So you only need to pay like about 2,000 to like 5,000 RMB per year, which is very cheap. You get to study overseas in China and then you only pay two to 5,000 RMB per year and your accommodation and living expenses. And then the next one and the last scholarship program that I would discuss today is the Jiangsu University uh, PhD scholarship. So again, Jiangsu University offers mm, like different kind of PhD scholarship, but uh, it is mostly in engineering, like environmental engineering, mechanical engineering, traffic engineering, agriculture engineering, and so on. And also they do have PhD in computer science. And for a PhD program, the duration of study is three years, and then it's in English, definitely. And for the scholarship coverage, you get free tuition fee and also free accommodation for the whole three years. So all you need to pay is the living expenses only, which is, I believe it's relatively cheap in China. So next part of the presentation would be tab centric. So first of all, this is like the formula for you on how to choose the right program for you in China, because I know that a lot of you are confused like deciding which one you want or maybe like where should you go like there are so many different types of universities so many unfamiliar universities that you probably never heard of aside of like Tsinghua Peking and Fudan University the rest you never heard of so yeah I would definitely help you and these three these uh, three things are the things that you can uh, take into account on deciding which program is the right one for you. So first one, you have to decide which major you want to you want to study. So what is your future career goal and also which subject do you want do you like the most or do you want to study the most? For example, if you enjoy studying about business or maybe you wanted to be a businessman, you can definitely uh, apply for business programs in China. 
And then the second one is the budget. Actually, this is like also one of the most uh, important thing in my opinion, because you need to know like who will fund your studies in China. Are you applying for a scholarship or do you want to self fund your studies in China? And then the next question would be, how much is your budget to study in China? Because actually Chinese universities uh, offer different like tuition fees as well across the universities. So some universities may be relatively cheap compared to the others. For example, they offer like 18,000 uh, RMB per year for the tuition fee, but there are also some other universities like the international universities, which tuition fee is about 88,000 RMB per year. So yeah, knowing your budget will definitely help you to narrow down the list of the universities that you can apply to. And last but not least is about location. Uh, so if you have uh, preferences in terms of like, let's say weather or like certain situation or something, or like maybe you only wanted to study in big cities. Yeah. So definitely knowing like the location, like where you want to study next, it's definitely important as well. So for example, I know that some of, uh, some of you that contacted me before, you mentioned that, oh, I only wanted to study in Beijing or Shanghai because I'm unfamiliar with other cities. That's okay. It will definitely help you to narrow down and also limit your choices of like, okay, so I know now I can only apply to, uh, I only want to apply to universities in Beijing and Shanghai. But some others, uh, maybe you wanted to like get like a mold of like, uh, local experience, maybe you wanted to practice Chinese more, that's why you wanted to study in a smaller city so that you will not meet a lot of foreigners and that you get to practice your Chinese more, so maybe you can choose to study in a smaller cities in China. So yeah, by knowing this, uh, all these three items here, it will definitely give you like the insights and also the way to like decide and also to narrow down the list of choices because again, there are 2,500 of uh, English taught programs in China and there's no way for you to like you know like to uh, check it one by one because there are just too many and then if you are still confused again you need our help and everything you can just go to this link over there it's quiz.china-admissions.com you can just uh, take note of it or like screenshot the page and you can just do it later so basically on the quiz you can also get to do the like simple quiz where we can and we will send you like the list of the recommendation uh, recommended programs at the end. And then the second one is the guidelines to a successful application. So first one is that you have to meet the eligibility criteria, which means that you meet like the age and nationality requirement and also the, the academic performance required by the university. Uh, especially for age, because a lot of you have been asking me about MBBS program, uh, like the age requirement of the MBBS program. Actually, MBBS program age requirement is very strict. Some universities do accept students uh, with the age of like 18 to 25, but some others are being a bit flexible, so they can accept 18 to 30 years old. So yeah, so if if you are, let's say the requirement is 18 to 30 years old and you are 33 years old this year, unfortunately you are not able to apply and then the second one is uh, having excellent academic performance or like at least your overall grades should be 75 percent and up it will definitely boost your application and then you will also get like higher chances of getting the admissions in china and then you need to have a great english or chinese proficiency it depends on which program you're applying for if you're applying for english top program then English is the only one required. But if you're applying for a Chinese top program, then you need to have a great Chinese skills. So then you need to submit all the required documents on time before the deadline. And then you need to complete the application fee payment also on time before the deadline. So it, which means that you need to complete your whole application before the deadline. And then the most important thing is to apply on China admissions platform because it's free. All you need to do is just to pay for the uh, application fee. We don't charge any application fee and all. And then we will help you and guide you further with your application step by step. And then uh, again, I mentioned this already, you need to apply to multiple universities to increase your chances because let's say if you're rejected by the first university, you still have a backup plan. And last but not least, for PhD applicants only, you need to get supervisor acceptance letter. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for you to get the admission at the Chinese university. 
So last part, I think, of the tips and tricks is why China admissions. So first one, as I mentioned before, applying on China admissions platform is actually free. It's free of charge. You don't charge any service fee from you. So basically, all you need to do is to pay the application fee because as I mentioned before, is it required? It's required by the Chinese universities to process your application and also to uh, help you apply for the visa and send it over to your home address. Second one is because China, uh, China admissions is a one platform for all, which means you can apply to multiple universities in one platform with just a click on China admissions website. Because as I mentioned before, it is best to have uh, to apply for multiple universities because it will increase your chances. And at least you have like a plan B, a backup plan. So if let's say your first plan is not successful, you still have like the next plan for you. So definitely it's going to be easier for you to apply on one platform instead of like applying on different uh, application system of different universities. And then last but not least is because China admissions are, is very responsive because we are reachable anytime on email, WhatsApp, and we can also schedule a time for us to call on Skype or on WhatsApp, my me and also my colleague are available for you to, uh, for us to have a call together. And then uh, normally our average response time on the working days on emails is about nine hours, 10 minutes. And then last part is the Q&A session. So these are the frequently asked questions from all the students. So when is the intake at Chinese universities? It's in March and September each year. But normally for March intake, it is only for a Chinese language program. And then is dormitory available? How can I book it? The availability depends on the university, but most of the universities actually have dorm for international students. And in, and in most cases that I know, they do have separate dorms for international students and also for the Chinese students. And then booking, uh, the booking is actually doable only after you receive the admission letter and we can help you book online if the university accept online dormitory booking. And then what is the age requirement to apply? So normally these are the age requirement for bachelor 18 to 30, master 18 to 35, PhD 18 to 40, and then for non-degree program or the semester long Chinese language program, uh, it's from 18 to 60 years old. And then, yeah, I am under 18 years old. So what should I do? A lot of you are experiencing this. So all applicants should be above 18 years old because this is related to the visa processing later. But if you are under 18 years old, then what you need to do is you need to find a guardian in China and the guardian must be either a Chinese national or a foreigner who is currently living in China under a valid working permit. So if your guardian is under a Chinese student permit, a Chinese student visa, then it is not possible. So student cannot become another student's guardian. So if you, you can only find like Chinese national who, wish, uh, who wants to become your guardian in China or a foreigner who have a valid working permit in China. And then the next question is how much it is to study in China? So again, for the tuition fee it starts from 18,000 RMB per year. For non-degree program, it starts from 6,500 per semester for the Chinese language program. And then living costs and accommodation in total, it's about 2,500 to 6,000. Yeah, 2,500 to 6,000 RMB per month. It depends on where you live. And then also it depends on your lifestyle as well. And then next question, can I work and study at the same time? Actually, the answer is no, because foreign students in China are not allowed to work. Both part-time and full-time jobs are prohibited. However, they are allowed to do internship as long as you get the permission from the university. And then the seven one, what are the additional required documents? Okay, so some of the Chinese universities require you to submit the foreigner physical examination form and also the non-criminal record. And some of you, uh, some of them may also ask for your CV if you're applying for MBA program or like master program. And then, yeah, some other documents are like, uh, we can tell you later because different university may have different uh, requirement as well. But majority of the basic documents, I have said it to you already on the previous slides. And then the eighth 
question is how to get PhD supervisor acceptance letter. So basically, you can just email the teacher about it. You can just email the professor about it. Send your research proposal as well. And then the last one is when is the application deadline? So it is uh, mostly in May to July, but a lot of them are in at the end of June. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, that's the end of my up of my presentation today. So again, I would like to highlight key important notes here. So if you want to search for programs, you can just simply go to this link. I really suggest you to just screenshot this page so you will not lose it and then you can keep this information forever. And then you can just go to apply.china-admissions.com slash search to get more programs, to get to know more like different types of programs in China. And then you can also apply you can also email us and also WhatsApp us if you have any questions. And if you want to book a uh, time to consult with us, just let us know on email or WhatsApp. We will send you over the link where you can book the time for the consultation with us. And then I'm sure that a lot of you have uh, social medias in 2020, definitely. So please do follow us on your social media accounts like on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We do post a lot of uh, videos recently on YouTube, especially for like let's say free trial online Chinese classes and like info sessions like this. So definitely it's good to subscribe on, to our YouTube account and then on our LinkedIn and also on our Twitter account as well. And if you have WeChat, please just uh, scan the QR code over there and to follow our official WeChat account. And we do have a WeChat group actually for the free online classes. And also another one is for MBA programs in China. And the third one is for the MBBS program in China. So if you wanted to join our WeChat group, you can just uh, simply scan the WeChat QR code over there to follow our social media, uh, our WeChat account or like email us. We will, uh, we will invite you to our WeChat group after that. Thank you. I noticed that a lot of you have, have sent me the questions. I hope you are still here with me because I will answer to all your questions now. So yeah, uh, yeah, like I mentioned before, this session is recorded, supposedly. So after we do some editings on it, we would definitely uh, share it on our social media accounts and also our YouTube account. So if you follow us on our social media and YouTube, then you will know when we'll you will know later after we uploaded this on our accounts. Okay, so from SciShop, can I apply for a language course any time of the year? So again, intake is only in March and September. And then, yeah, I think for the scholarship, I just wanted to mention it again that CSC scholarship deadline have passed so it is not possible for you to apply for CSC scholarship right now because the university would not accept any new applications after the deadlines. So what is the chance to get from Antoin Kimbasi? What is the chance of get the admission in Chinese medical university if you have completed the Chinese language in China? So basically it may give you like additional uh, points for your application, but actually it is not required if you are applying for English taught and BBS program. Uh, from Nasiru who applied for PhD in linguistic at Shanghai Normal University. So you can expect to get an update from the university. So basically after you apply and then if you after you apply and then you submitted your completed uh, application to the university and all. So after that, you can allow like four to six weeks, sometimes four to eight weeks to get an update from the university. And then they will let you know if let's say you pass the review or not. And then sometimes they will uh, also invite you to the online interview after the review. Yeah, so a lot of you have asked me as well about the uh, current coronavirus situation in China and whether or not like how is it for you like how will it be stuff like that especially for those of you who already applied for the March intake and got the admission so actually a lot of the Chinese universities are still saying that they are postponing the spring 2020 intake and then in most cases 
this, they will defer it to the September intake and it is possible for you to defer your uh, admission to the September intake. You can just simply contact the university or if you're applying to return admissions or if you need our help to follow up with the university, please do let us know, send us an email or like a WhatsApp. Uh, we would help you to follow up with the university or if you change your mind i hope you don't change your mind and still study in china if you change your mind we will uh, def uh, definitely help you to follow up to the university as well saying that you change your mind and you no longer want to study in china but yeah uh, it should be possible and a lot of them actually have said that uh, they would move the students to the september intake and then i will now check the answer from Hamra Amin. Uh, okay, every every medical school have six years program, including one year Chinese language. So, actually, uh, for the MBBS program, yes, it is normally a six years program in China, and yes, you will be studying Chinese language, but it will be it will be inside the curriculum. So, I think you will learn it every year, but maybe for like one or two. Uh, credits or something. So yeah, you will learn Chinese language the whole five years, I suppose, because anyway, at the end of the study, you need to do internship at the Chinese hospital, which means that although you're, uh, although you're studying in English, you still need to know Chinese as well, so that your internship later on will be uh, run out smoothly. And then from Mustafi, how about those who ask for non-criminal record and they are live in a different country? So for example, if like let's say in the past, in the last six months, you are living in UK, for example, although you are, your nationality isn't uh, from that country, you can simply ask for the non-criminal record from UK police station. I think you should be able, I think you should be able to get it. Or like if it's possible for you to like go back to your home country and you wanted to get it from your home country or you can also ask your embassy as well in the in your current location about how to get it uh, because you are not living at your home country. And then from Celia, do you have any tips for the medical certificate to be accepted? Uh, so actually there is like the formal official form for the foreigner examination form or like for the uh, medical certificate. So you basically just need to uh, print the form and then bring the form over to the hospital or the clinic where you conduct the uh, medical exam. And that's it. That's, yeah, because that's a required, that's the required form. And you cannot use any other form. And we can send you the form as well. You can just simply contact us on email or WhatsApp. And then can you recommend a website to find off campus accommodation? Yeah, I'll just type it there because it's gonna be easier if I type it over here. Uh, so there are two websites. First one is Wellsea, wellsea.com. But they, I think they only uh, cover like big cities in China, like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, like other big cities. And then another one is called charum.com, but it's in Chinese, but you can just have it translated by Google as well. Yeah, and then uh, which universities are the best for MBBS? Well, there are so many best universities for MBBS, but I will just uh, let you know like the universities which are still open at the moment. So for example, uh, Shantou University Medical College, and then there is uh, Shandong University. There is also uh, Jiangsu University and another Capital Medical University. But for Capital Medical University and also Shantou University Medical College, the deadline is coming up very soon at the end of this month. Uh, okay, so for Ami Parasa Shiva, internship for medical studies, are they paid? Do they start from third year? So as far as I know, the internship will start at the last year, which is at the sixth year of your study. And I don't think you get payment from the internship because it's a part of the curriculum as MBBS student. And then can I, uh, from anonymous, can I apply for September 2021 intake? Yeah, sure, you can apply for September 2021 intake, but actually the official application period is on, like at least at the end of this year. So like around November or October this year. 
but you can apply on China admissions platform for next year's intake and we will submit your application to the university right after the application period for September 2021 intake starts. And then which university offering multimedia and all which university offer like uh, certain programs. Yeah, please search on our platform because obviously I cannot remember all 2,500 programs in China. So you can just simply go to our platform and check it there. And then uh, from Cornelita on the chat. Okay, can the student visa be obtained by using travel agent? Can I apply in the consulate instead of embassy? Uh, I think it should be okay. Even though you're using travel agent, just make sure to apply uh, to apply on the China embassy or like Chinese visa center. Like in some countries, they only process the visa application on their uh, on their visa centers. I think I have like around two minutes to spend because otherwise it's going to be too long and maybe boring as well. So I'll just answer a few more questions and then I'll end the session. So if you have any more questions afterward, uh, you can just simply let me know on email or WhatsApp or like you can just DM us on our social media as well. Yeah. Okay, so for CSC application, because it's ended this year, then you have to wait for next year. Roughly, it opens around uh, like end of January or like early February. Normally, or like you can expect like near after the Chinese Spring Festival. And then, yeah, if you are looking for like which university is the best for certain programs, again, I would uh, recommend you to just simply check on our platform on apply china-admissions.com slash search and then uh, what is the deadline to accept the offer if I'm successful for MBBS? Do you mean for 2020 intake or 2021 intake? So normally they give you like a certain deadline so for example after they give you the admission they will let you know uh, they will let you know like you have to confirm your acceptance within a certain period of time and if you fail to do so then you know like your opportunity may be blown away uh, and then another questions another questions are there any programs in Shanghai that includes Chinese language program and an internship program so normally, like I said before, like uh, Chinese language students can do internship in China. So people who have student visa can actually do internship in China, but then you have to get the university permission as well because uh, the university will need to help you update your visa afterwards. So yeah, it depends on the university. If you can get their permission, it's okay. And then I plan to ha head to Shanghai. However, I read somewhere that if we were to go in through X2 visa, we can only arrive a few days before the registration. Oh, so the thing is with the student visa is that, so when you first enter China, the validity of your visa would be only for one month, right? So uh, afterwards, it's like, after like before before it expires, you need to like uh, extend your visa to like the temporary residence permit, things like that. And the university will help you do it. So that's why if you enter China like way before, it may trouble you with, you know, like it may trouble you somehow because you may lose the time. You may already like uh, stay up there for like longer time and not being able to like extend your visa on time. Okay, so yeah, I think I answer CSC already. Okay, so from Hamra, I mean, shall I apply for September intake for MBBS then? I was confused because of the pandemic. The answer is a definite yes. You need to apply now before it's too late, before you miss the application deadline, before you have to wait for September 2021 intake. So yes, please apply now. So yeah, what makes a strong application for MBBS? I think I mentioned it before. 
Uh, so it's good that you need to meet all the eligibility criteria. Having an excellent academic performance is actually one of the uh, key of getting of like of securing admission in China. So it's best if you have high grades or like high performance during your high school or bachelor or master to get admission at Chinese university. And then from Athena Fu, I have master in physical chemistry and I want to apply for PhD program. Can I apply? Yes, you can apply for PhD program if you have master's diploma. Okay, so basically if you have master's uh, certificate, you can apply for PhD program. If you have bachelor certificate, you can apply for a master's program. And yeah, if you have high school diploma, you can apply for a bachelor program, something like that. And then some other questions. Yeah, I think two, three more questions. Okay. From Nelson, can I apply for a master's degree in China if I already studied another master's degree in my country? The answer is yes, why not? You can always apply for another master's degree, uh, master program in China. Yeah, you're welcome to apply. Please uh, use our platform and then find the right program, find the suitable program that you want to apply for and then apply. And then from Donnell, is UIB the best university to study master in, in international business in China? I would say UIB is actually one of the best to study business program in China. And actually in the eyes of Chinese people, uh, UIBE is actually more, it's actually uh, quite famous in terms of like a place to study economics and business. And it is actually well known in China. So yeah, last two questions from the Q&A bar. Okay, so what if I'm not yet graduated from my degree program and I want to apply for Chinese language program? So yeah, if you are not yet graduated for, uh, from high school, from your bachelor, master, whatever, you can just simply ask your school or university to provide you what's called a pre-graduation letter. So basically it mentions uh, your expected graduation date. And like, let's say it says that, oh yeah, this student will be graduated in June or July, blah, 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 something like that. That uh, can be useful for like uh, to replace the missing diploma because it is not yet issued. So yeah, from Jamin, how do I find out more about Shanghai Theater Academy when it's not inside of China Missions? Yeah, we can still help you apply to Chinese universities, although it is not listed on our platform. So we are continuing upgrading and also updating our platform so that we can cover like a lot more universities to help international students have a lot more options as well. So if you cannot find it on our platform, do not worry. You can just simply email or WhatsApp us and then saying your intention to apply to certain universities and then you cannot find it on our platform. We can send over like a link for you to apply and also uh, or the application form where you can just fill in and we can help you and assist you to apply there. Yeah, I think I I cover like most of the questions already today. So if you have if you still have any questions afterwards, feel free to let us know by sending us an email or a WhatsApp messages. And again, we do have WeChat group where you can just scan the QR code over there to follow our official account and say your intention to join our WeChat groups and. If you want to book a time for consultation with us, feel free to let us know by email or WhatsApp as well. We will send you the link to apply. Sorry, to book your time for the call. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, thank you so much for joining today's session. I hope it's helpful for you. See you on another time. And if you wanted to know more about uh, MBBS program, we do have another session actually on Friday at the same time at 6 p.m. Beijing time. Thank you guys. Bye. See you next time.